Hi there, Craig again from Music Tech Academy with another video request about how to perform with Ableton Live. As the name implies, Ableton's strength lies in live performance, so there are many ways to do this. In this video, we're going to focus on DJing as you would in the traditional way, with two turntables and a mixer. We're also going to look at warping whole tracks so they are locked together on the grid, and also how to set up effects and group them together with macro controls. At first I'm going to do everything under the assumption that we don't have a MIDI controller. And then at the end, I'll look at how to assign controller elements for those of you lucky enough to have one. We'll also assume that our sound card is the onboard one, with only one output. Then later, we'll look at splitting up the signal to go into a hardware mixer for those who own a sound card with a multi-out option. The first thing to do is to set up our tracks and preferences. We're going to delete the MIDI track for now and insert another audio track by pressing Command T. Just for clarity, we're going to name the track on the left, by pressing Command R, Deck A, and the track on the right as Deck B. You can think of these as turntables or CDJs. Now we're going to go into our preferences by pressing Command Comma. We're going to click on the Record Warp Launch tab and make sure that Loop Warp Short Samples is set to Unwarped One Shot. We also want to uncheck the auto warp long samples and set our default warp algorithm to complex. Now we'll go back into our session view and before we drag in our first track, I'm going to key assign the metronome button to the M key and the tap tempo button to T. You don't have to do this, but it makes it a little more convenient. I'll also turn off the global quantization. Now we can bring in our first track. Once you've dragged in the first track, double click on it to bring up the clip view. All going to plan, your track should be unwarped and unlooped. What we're going to do is play the clip and tap along on the T key until we get a steady tempo. Now we know what the approximate tempo of the track is, we can activate the warp button. While live is pretty good at detecting tempo transients in quantized dance music, it tends to wander a little when you give it anything that is a bit loose or has been recorded live, particularly old rock, jazz or funk and soul tracks that you might want to mix in with more contemporary stuff. Before we set about fixing that particular problem, we'll find where we want the clip to start. Let's say it's at this point here. We are going to add a warp marker by double clicking on the transient marker, then we will right click on the warp marker and select set 1.1.1 here. This tells Live that when we trigger this particular clip, we want it to start at this exact point. Then we'll right click on the warp marker and select warp from here straight. Now we're going to play the song through at different points with the metronome on and you'll be able to hear how the start of the track is in time with the click track but as we get further through the song it gets more and more out of sync. To remedy this, we're going to grab the transient markers at different points through the song and stretch them so that the beats line up with the bar measure lines. It's important to note that this is different from creating warp markers and stretching those. This way, the whole song elasticizes exponentially, like a Fibonacci sequence, rather than only from in front of a specific point. This can be trickier with some songs than others, and in my experience, just takes a little bit of patience and experimenting until you get a locked groove. Gets my the 
loud to eel Plus I smell like fly build the dog In grey boomers I look like Sasha Bob Yeah, 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 Oh, I know, you want my arm beat hook Oh, I know, your brains are partially cold To witness right this little off of the gourmet kibble You're so the cold Ultimately, the goal, though, is to make sure that both the start and end of the song are in time with the metronome. Once we have done that, we're going to drop our second track into the second clip of deck B and repeat the process. Next, we're going to click on the Show Hide Crossfader button. This will bring up our crossfader assigned switches. Set deck A to A and deck B to B. Now each track is set to the left and right. Note that this feature only supports two channel options, but you can have as many tracks as you like assigned to either A or B. Now we have two tracks that are locked to the tempo grid. And as long as our global quantization is on, they'll play perfectly in time no matter how we launch them. We can leave the crossfader in the center and mix between them using the level faders. Mix between them using the crossfader. Or, because we put them on different rows, or as Ableton likes to call them, scenes, we can use the scene launch buttons to trigger each track abruptly. For those without controllers, the scene launch option, with a bit of careful planning, probably offers the most scope for creativity without too much need for a mouse. Here's a quick example of something you could do with these two tracks. First, we'll duplicate the first track two times by selecting the clip and pressing Command D. Then we'll duplicate the second track as well. Now we'll go into clip view on the second clip in deck A, activate the loop switch and adjust the loop bracket so it loops this quarter note. Then we'll do the same on the third clip, but make it a four bar loop of the vocal phrase. Next, we'll bring up clip view for the second track in deck B and find a section where there's an isolated percussion sound, like a beat, a kick or a snare. Yeah. 
If the tracks were both in the same key, you could do this with a melody as well, but since I happen to know that these two particular tracks are in different keys, it's less dissonant if we use percussion to make the transition. Finally, we're going to key map our scene launch buttons to keys on our keypad using the corresponding numerical values. Press Command K to activate the mapping function. Left click on the scene button you want to map and then press the key on your QWERTY keyboard that you want to map to the button. You'll know it's worked if you get a little number in the box you've just mapped. Do the same for buttons 2 and 3 and then press Command K again to deactivate the key mapping function. We'll also make sure our computer MIDI keyboard function is switched off by pressing Command Shift K. If this is activated, it will take precedence over key mapping and it won't work. Now we can trigger our scenes without having to use the mouse. Keep in mind that you don't only have to have two tracks. You can have as many as you like lined up with both audio and MIDI clips being triggered. In part two of this video, we're going to look at creating custom effects racks that we can jam with over the top of our tracks as they play.